phenotyping differentials. Now I am going to describe how to read or phenotype the differentials. And so these differential trays that are displayed here have been um, in the greenhouse or in a growth chamber for two weeks after inoculation. And now they're ready to be read or phenotyped. And what I mean by phenotyping the differentials is you're classifying the infection type for each differential line. The infection type is simply the interaction between the rust isolate and also the, the wheat line. And infection types are classified on a zero to four scale. And where zero is an immune reaction with no rust and four is complete compatibility. As an example of a zero infection type, I would like to show this monogenic line with SR36. When you look at the primary leaves that have been inoculated with the isolate of rust, you can see no visible symptoms of rust. And so this is what we classify as a zero infection type. In contrast to that, this monogenic line um, has the resistance gene SR10. And SR10, in reaction to the isolate of rust that has been inoculated here, is showing complete compatibility. And so you can see the large pustules that are diamond-shaped and elongated. And so this infection, infection type we classify as a four. Now, infection types can be intermediate in between a zero and a four. And so as an example of that, I'm going to show this differential, which has the gene SR24. You can see that the rust development is much less than with the infection type of four. However, it is greater than a zero. And so we classify this infection type as a two infection type. You can see that the sporulating areas are quite small and they are round shaped. Also, you can see that there is a green island surrounding the sporulating area. Now, the small pustule size, the round shape, and also the green islands are indicative of a two infection type. This monogenic line has the gene SR38. The infection type is different than a two, so there's no green island. However, you do have this sporulating area with chlorosis right around um, the sporulating area. And so when you see this um, death of cells, chlorosis or yellowing and necrosis right next to the sporulating area, this is indicative of a one infection type. Now for SR38, there are more um, infection types than just one on the same leaf. And so you can see these yellow spots. So the yellow spots are spots of chlorosis. And we call this infection type a fleck infection type. Fleck infection types are in between a one and a zero. And so what has happened is the rust has begun to infect the plant, but the plant has killed all of the cells in the vicinity of the rust infection. And so for SR38, we call the overall infection type a FLEC1 infection type. Now this monogenic line has the stem rust resistance gene SR21. When you look at the reaction of QTHJ on SR21, you can see that the infection type is lower than a four, but it is higher than a two. And we classify it as a three infection type. The reason why it is not a two is because you can see the sporulating areas are elongated and they're diamond shaped. And so it's clearly not a two infection type. Also, the green islands aren't as pronounced. Now, the reason why it's not a four infection type is because we see a fair amount of chlorosis or yellowing um, around the sporulating areas. And the sporulating areas are smaller than what we saw for the four infection type. So we classify this as a three infection type.
Mello would like to describe the difference between plus and minus. And so on the zero to four infection type scale I've just described, you can add plus and minus signs to be more descriptive of your infection types. And as an example of that, I'd like to show you this monogenic line, which has the stem rust resistance gene, SR7B. Now, for SR7B, when it has been inoculated with QTHJ, you can see the round sporulating areas and the green islands, which are indicative of a two infection type. However, compared to the SR24 monogenic line, these sporulating areas are larger. And so this quantitative difference in the sporulating areas being a little bit larger, but still being a two, leads us to classify this infection type as a two plus infection type. Now I would like to describe the classification as of high versus low infection types. And so I've described this zero to four scale of infection types. These various infection types can be classified as either high or low. And so scientists around the world have agreed that three and four infection types are classified as high infection types. And infection types two, one, fleck, and zero are classified as low infection types. Now I'm going to talk about the temperature sensitivity of some of the differential lines. Some of the stem rust resistance genes are temperature sensitive. And so they might be um, exhibiting a high reaction or a high infection type to an avirulent race at one temperature and a low reaction to an avirulent race at another temperature. And this can confound how you classify races of stem rust. As an example of that, I'd like to show you um, SR6. And so here I have two trays of differentials that have both been inoculated with the same isolate of stem rust, TPMKC. And you can see here, this is a low infection type. You can see fleck infection types, also one infection types. Now this tray was kept at 16 degrees. In contrast to this, you can see this set of differentials, which was inoculated with the same race, TPMK, but this was kept at 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. When you look at the reaction, you can see that it is much higher. So there are three infection types in addition to one infection types and a few fleck infection types. Another line that I'd like to describe at this point is SR13. Now, SR13 is not one of the 20 North American stem rust differentials. However, it is in one of the differential lines that we use at the Serial Disease Laboratory. And it is exactly the opposite of SR6. And so SR13 is more effective at the higher temperatures and less effective at the lower temperatures. In a third gene that I would like to um, briefly mentioned at this point is SR21. Now we do not completely understand the relationship between SR21 and temperature, but isolates of rust that have been classified as virulent to SR21 sometimes show low infection types at certain temperatures or in certain genetic backgrounds. So for these lines, SR21 and SR6, and if you have SR13 that you're looking at as well, please be careful when phenotyping these lines because temperature can play a role uh, with the, uh, the infection types that you are seeing. So the monogenic line with SR9A has this intermediate low infection type of two plus three minus. Other monogenic lines that have somewhat of an intermediate um, low infection type are SR7B, SR9B, and SRTMP. All of these monogenic lines have low infection types that could be about two plus. And so be careful when phenotyping these lines because you might mistakenly classify the infection type as high if you're not paying close attention. So 
Some monogenic lines confer intermediate low infection types. As an example of that, I'd like to show this monogenic line, which has the stem rust resistance gene, SR9A. Now you can see that the reaction here is an intermediate reaction. However, we classify this infection type as low. We expect to see this 2 plus uh, or even a 2 plus 3 minus infection type exhibited by SR9A when um, inoculated with an avirulent race. Now this is significant because if you're not paying attention, you might misclassify um, this reaction as high. And so it's important to know what, what the expected infection type is for the different resistance genes. In conclusion, there are these variety of factors that can influence um, determining what race your isolate is. And so you have temperature sensitivity and also these intermediate low infection types that can bias um, your race determination. So it is essential that you replicate your experiments in order to verify that the results you are seeing are consistent.